So Charles Payne is talking about Robin Hood disabling the buy button again. And anytime we hear anything about that from Charles Payne or anyone else, I'm going to bring that to your attention. ASAP. Now, on top of that, we like to go a little bit further than the surface. We had good news today with AMC as well as the broader markets, and I want to get into that with a little bit more detail here in this video. But on top of that, you have some big economic data coming out tomorrow, and that's going to be a very big deal for our markets as well as it could be a big problem for our markets and could be to a benefit of AMC. I also... Last but not least, want to discuss this rumor that I have been hearing of Adam Aaron lending out his stock. Is this true? Is this not? Should you care? Is this of any importance? Let's get into it, guys. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. If you see the bag right here, well, all my OGs know you guys have been around a long time. We talk about Wendy's and them live streams. Hey, we got the apple pecan salad, baby. It's fire. Check it out if you have not already. That is not a paid sponsorship. But we used to get going about food all the time on the live streams. And, and Wendy's was a, a top choice. So, uh, yeah. A lot of you new guys ain't, are not going to understand that at all. But let's go ahead and get into the first topic of this video. And that is definitely going to be Charles Payne. He just pinned this tweet that was put out about 14 hours ago. So, uh, you know, I'm filming this video quite late, depending on when you're seeing this video, the hours obviously could be different, but Charles Payne says not only has self anointed smart money crowd been completely wrong, but the so-called dumb money laughing all the way to the bank another month, month like this, and they might disable the buy button. And this is from Liz Ann Saunders. She says meme, uh, she says the meme index has been outperforming S&P 500 for third consecutive month with July being the strongest thus far since this past January's past performance is no guarantee of future results. Obviously, in the last three months have been pretty strong, outgaining the S&P by about nine percent in the last month. So obviously, that is, uh, you know, quite good. And then three hours ago, um, I wasn't necessarily going to cover it um, 14 hours ago, but three hours ago, he also retweeted Brian Buckley that says that tag Charles Payne said, you just had to give them ideas about taking away the buy button again, didn't you? It says, yikes. And this is a, a Robin Hood message. The 24 hour market is currently unavailable. You can still place an order for another uh, trading session. Yikes. Yeah, there's a bit of a problem going on out there. And and just my um actually coincidentally enough today I accidentally uh deposited 23,000 into my Robinhood account. I was not trying to do that and they wouldn't let me cancel it. They said the timing of was such that it went over like the time you can cancel it. It was like 10 seconds. I instant instantly tried to cancel it and they wouldn't let me so uh it was strange definitely strange nonetheless and that's my personal take on it we'll see what ultimately happens now as far as adam aaron lending out stock of amc well to one extent i wouldn't blame him because cost borrow rates have been a thousand percent on the other hand, I don't think this makes a whole lot of sense. Now, this has just been a rumor that's been kind of floating around in the community for the last couple of days, maybe a, a, a week or so. I'm really not even sure where it started from, to be honest. It's one of those things that gets passed online so many times, you, you can't even narrow it down. Somebody probably said it in a video or on Twitter or somewhere else. I do highly doubt that i highly doubt that's what he's trying to do i believe that would go against what he's personally allowed to do with his positions granted he is the ceo of amc I, let me know down below in the comment section i don't think that is legal that you can actually do that and i don't think adam aaron let's be honest i don't think adam aaron um you know wants to see amc do bad i think adam aaron has good intentions and he wants to see the stock do well. He does have a personal interest in AMC, 
regardless of who likes that or who hates that, I don't think he is the one against you. Short sellers, you know, market makers, people that are manipulating AMC and the broader market, sure, they're against you, right? And we know the names of those players. 100% against you. I don't think Adam Aaron is the one that's against you. I think he does have the best intentions, you know, possible. He doesn't want to leave the legacy of screwing a retail community base and AMC ultimately going bankrupt. Like, that's not his motive. Um, I know you hear crazy speculation about he's he's paid or, or whatnot. I just don't think that is really logical. So I would draw a conclusion of, hey, if he's doing it, who gives a shit? I mean, it does it really matter? No. These shares are coming out of thin air anyways. I would say 99.9% .9 chance he's not, and that rumor is just absurd and ridiculous. That's that's really the bottom bottom line fact of the matter. Now, as far as the good news that came out today, I think a lot of people missed it. It was Fed Jerome Powell. And this was good news for a couple reasons. It sent money into your small and mid-cap stocks. Note how AMC rallied at the same time the markets did. And then AMC rallied into the close of the day alongside a lot of your small and mid-cap stocks. Now, AMC, it's not facing this dilution pressure right now since the courts have rejected the settlement. We're kind of in limbo. So you've seen AMC react a lot more normally as you would have expected the broader markets to do in which, again, your small and mid-cap stocks did. AMC performed pretty in line with a lot of your other small and mid-cap stocks. This can be a positive for that front, but also, you know, Apple, Microsoft, your big tech names as rates presumably will start to fall from here. Maybe we get one more rate hike, but over the next three to six months, rates are going to be lower than where they are now. It makes a lot of sense to take some of that money out of big tech and put that into small and mid cap stocks and overall kind of reduce liquidity in your, you know, big tech names, your, your biggest big tech names that are really, um, not growing. Think about it like that meta for an example, which I'm not going to group them in this in this category but meta just had the first double digit growth quarter over quarter that they have seen since 2021 like even meta was growing at like five percent quarter over quarter and year over year like apple and microsoft they're 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 lucky to be in positive territory so those are all val value kind of names right now i guess you could say they're far from value they're very expensive on price to earnings ratios and whatnot but you should start to see money leave some of those big names and i think hedge funds institutions they have to be allocated to them it kind of means you got to watch the stocks fall you, you just got to drop with them you can't underperform the broader markets especially what has happened in the broader markets so far in 2023 lots of hedge funds and institutions a vast majority of them have not beaten the nasdaq most certainly or even the s p 500 so far in 2023 so it's not like they can sell out of those stocks because those stocks are falling that's absolutely not the case they have to stay allocated in them uh for their market waiting just to track the s p and then the nasdaq alone so uh that is a huge positive de development today and that's because fed Jerome powell basically signaled this is probably the last rate hike maybe there's one more but uh probably the last one now as far as the economic data coming out to morning to morning to that must be a new word to morning <laughs> kind of like that tomorrow morning well you're gonna get durable goods orders month over month for june you're expecting this number to come in at one percent we covered this in the last video but i want to highlight how important this is remember 2022 where bad economic data sent the markets up like two percent on the broader indexes and good economic data would you know send the markets down two to three percent that's no longer this market and even for your small and mid-cap stocks, you don't want to see the markets crash, right? AMC, um, you know, it's arguable. If you get a rally at the same time the markets crash, that's good. If the markets crash and stay down and you kind of have this bullish upwind with AMC, that could also be good. But overall, probably not a huge positive to see the markets fall, especially right now since you're not facing dilution. Notice today how the markets you know, were kind of correlated with AMC. Small and mid-cap stocks started to rally. So did AMC. And AMC was down like 4% in the video we put out earlier. 
it closed almost break even on the day today considering the, the, the move up that we see in the after hours. So durable goods orders expected to come in at 1% tomorrow. Anything higher than that is great. Anything lower than that, not a huge problem. Until you get to like 0 0.4, 0 0.3 or less, that's when you start to get concerns about growth. But tomorrow, you're going to get GDP growth rate quarter over quarter advanced numbers for Q2. You're expecting 1.8% quarter over quarter and GDP price index quarter over quarter, you're expecting 3%. So very strong numbers. If these numbers come in a lot weaker than expectations, this could be a pretty sizable catalyst to get the markets to fall. Again, on one hand, the market's falling. Uh, that's that's pretty good. Now, what you're probably going to see and why it's negative again is big tech probably would do well. In this scenario, big tech would probably hold up the best because where else do you want to be if we're heading into a recession? People have been looking at big tech like recession proof, which it's obviously not, but that's where investors would want to be. That's where all hedge funds and institutions are essentially allocated, and that would not help drain liquidity out of our markets. On top of that, you're going to get wholesale inventories, goods, trade balance, retail inventory. Retail inventories excluding autos month over month, durable goods orders excluding transportation month over month, initial jobless claims for July 22nd, as well as initial jobless claims for week average, continuing uh, jobless claims as well. Uh, real consumer spending quarter over quarter expected to come in at 4.1%. So some very hot numbers you're, you're expecting just across the board as far as GDP and the economy. If those numbers don't come in good, then you're going to have a problem. Kansas Fed Composite Index. This can also move the markets as well. You're expecting this to get a lot better from last month's rating of negative 12 to negative five. So you're expecting quite a rebound here. Same thing for Kansas Kansas Fed manufacturing, expecting that to be negative three. Last month's rating was negative 10. So you're expecting like a 300% increase. Again, expectations are high. So it could be one of those upset kind of catalysts. And this could have implications for AMC as well as um, obviously the broader markets. Now, as far as the option activity as well today, I want to highlight this. You've seen a couple calls flow into AMC towards the end of the day, but so much smaller than the puts. It does look like some hedge funds and institutions trying to hedge their positions a little bit. A September 15th, $3 call worth $167,000. And a January 17th, 2025, $1 call worth $126,000. Today's positive order value is 6%. $9 million worth of option orders were placed, and it was comprised of 62 orders. So a lot smaller of an actual volume day today in the options. Uh, you didn't see as many traded today. You didn't see a high dollar amount, which could potentially set us up uh, you know, for a rally. It could be a leading indicator, maybe. We'll have to wait and see, obviously, what we get tomorrow and then ultimately on Friday. Nonetheless, if you guys want to come trade with us live in real time, we are making trades every single day. We are trading options. We are making some money over there. Hit that like button, number one, subscribe to the channel, number two, and check out that link down below in the description of this video for the trading community. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.